the medicine men to actually perform and conduct the uh, healing ceremonies. This authority was given to them when they went and made their journey to the top of the mountain and collected mountain soil. They give themselves to the ceremony and how they will conduct them and how they will explain the ceremonies. The ceremony is a one-time thing. You recall that ceremony. When you look at that bead and you recognize that that ceremony is still good, you can still change and you can still do better. The Nedrico de got done getting Tino A. I dig. Dadan de say pity Naka down has turned out Tago. So that that a yada had Nendale had Halunda. Taro de got the A. I did Senegi to the eight die it's a hot daughter. Do so the Zenegi eighty to the Atsalia. Di Conho got the gay did I die a hatalia. Cohort ego. A bene ye. Da de ya da had nen de eko. A cushi. Da de na kida da di. Na ha rabbit at nini. Hat hard but at nini. Di da visit the hono ho jonge. A nage the skedge. A what el ye da yo ye go e hadi. Da hatande has so his yo. Gade ya hadi da yo. Bada da de de do. Lago da bo. A she di ga da da. At the Aki Doti, at the hand, at any Gishin Dicker, or the dust on the Gobank, the way not all that is. In the uh, teaching of our people, the Ne, we have uh, the men are usually the, uh, the medicine men to actually perform and conduct the, uh, the healing ceremonies or the various uh, ceremonies. It is that uh, this authority was given to them when they went and made their journey to the top of the mountain and collected mountain soil. They give themselves to the ceremony and how they will conduct them and how they will explain the ceremonies and that in special settings. Most of the time it's inside of a sweat lodge. Sweat lodge is very important. There's two elements in that that are very important in a sweat lodge. And that is the, uh, the water, the sweat, that comes from your body and the ones that you drink as you, uh, before you enter the sweat lodge. And then also the, uh, the heat, the very hot heat that you get from the uh, stones that are placed inside of the sweat lodge. And it's very hot in there. And uh, so that we have two elements, the, the water and the fire. Those are the two cleansing um, agents and that involved in the uh, sweat lodge. Outside of the sweat lodge, we have settings inside of the hogan, inside of a, uh, a ceremony, a setting. And uh, we have what we call a chitjitjitji, which is um, a fire made in the center of the hogan. It's an open fire, and you use very uh, small branches of juniper and uh, get it very hot inside of the... Uh, the Hogan, with all of the different uh, the patients and the families and other relatives and that that uh, come to, to participate in the ceremony. That's uh, a part of an, another ceremony. Uh, sometimes uh, even the main one that I'm going to mention here is which is the washing at the um, ash pile. Now, in previous uh, presentations, we've shared for you with the um, families and that to keep contention and anger out of the Hogan. That if you want to be a contentious person, you take it outside, away from the Hogan entrance, where maybe 40 or 50 yards away, there's an ash pile where all of the ashes that you burn in the Hogan, when it is removed, you take it out there in that locale and you put it in a pile. And so all of the... Uh, negative things that you want to uh, argue about is to be removed from the Hogan and go beyond the ash pile or at the ash pile and dispose of it. Because fire is considered a cleansing agent as well as water. So these two uh, elements are very necessary in the cleansing and, and uh, making new your person or yourself. And so it's important to understand this particular ceremony, that means probably the closest translation is the washing and purification of the, uh, at the ash pile. And the uh, ceremonies 
on ish is what they call it. It's uh, putting sacred markings on your body that is to be removed after the completion of the ceremony four days later. And so this is part of that ceremony. But uh, there are so many things in that that uh, people need to have explained to them. For example, even the word hatchafi, if you translate that into English, it would just be the singer. But that's not what hatchafi is. Hatchafi is the person that knows the various ceremonial songs and can explain them and their origin as to when the holy people gave that particular song. And also the prayers and that when he offers up the prayer, he will always tell the people, this is the origin of this particular ceremony. When it was first given to us for this uh, particular ceremony, this prayer or this song. And so they explain the history of the song and the prayers and also the, uh, the way the ceremony is conducted and why. And so I want to explain the portion of the uh, ceremony that's called Teshitatakis. And uh, there's uh, the whole thing is you have to understand the significance of the ashes. The ashes is symbolic of the fire and that the cleansing that provided the heat for the home, that provided the cooking of the food and uh, the keeping of light so that you can see what you're doing in some dark place. And it is necessary to understand that it is a source of light and the light is con uh, considered the light of truth. And so that is the cleansing agent, is the residue of that fire, and that is the ash. And when that is removed from the Hogan and put out there east of the Hogan entrance, about 30, 40, or 50 yards away, that's the ash pile. The ceremony takes place in that particular locale. Now, there's the other thing, is a lot of times people call their trash pile that's not right. is one thing, and is another thing. is trash. That's put over to the north side of the, uh, the between the ash pile, the path between the ash pile and the entrance of the Hogan. The uh, trash pile would be to the north, and that's where that would uh, all of the trash and that that you might remove from the house is put over in that area. It's on the north side. And that is the way that the traditional Hogan was set up. Now, so when we conduct the ceremony of the, uh, the washing at the ash pile, the patient sits out there and they face the direction east. And water is used at that locale to wash the hair and as much of the body as possible. And the ceremony is done to remove from the mind, from the heart, from the physical self, and from the spiritual self all of the different negative things of your, of your being. What you have said, what you have thought, what you have done, and what you can plan to do is uh, the thing that you're supposed to be aware of. That is all of that is removed, is washed away. In other words, your life is given a clean slate. And now that you have received this particular ceremony, that you do not just go about thinking negative things or things in the wrong way. And you try to select the best way to do certain things. You think about it and you plan it out in a positive way. So all of that uh, evil is removed from you with the washing at the ash pile. And so you're supposed to be able to feel positive towards other people and to also be a person that is going to be in sacred places physically and that you respect and you keep things sacred that are sacred, the things that are sacred. And you start to think more on a spiritual level and understanding that you are the child of the holy people. Beyazhen is what you are to tell yourself and to remind yourself. And so as the offspring of sacred holy being, they expect certain things of you. And it is that you have to make your best effort to become the person that they would like you to be. And that's a person that is on the beauty way path and to be the person that uses prayer and all of their different uh, 
things that they do in life, they have to rely on prayer. It's very important to understand in the traditional teaching is that you must be a person of prayer and that this uh, third world, and that is, this is the corn pollen path and it's the beauty way path. And so the beauty way path requires that you be a, a prayerful being that is that recognizes themselves as an offspring and a child of the holy people and that they expect certain things of you and you do your very best when all of that is washed from you that means all of the bad things that have been said against you and uh, that is removed when they do the uh, the ash pile washing is to remove from your mind and from your heart and from your physical self and from your spiritual self all of the things that are negative and that you have now a clean slate and the traditional way they used to tie a little small turquoise bead on you somewhere maybe on your hair knot or on your person somewhere or sometimes even on your corn pollen pouch but somewhere and that's always to remind you you have been given a clean slate now go ahead and live your life and make your life because you have now been given a clean slate in life and do your best to keep it clean. The ceremony is a one-time thing. Um, it is that uh, you recall that ceremony when you look at that bead and you recognize that that ceremony is still good. You can still change and you can still do better. And that is the intent of the bead to remind you. That was one of the things in that, that the, the holy people wanted us to understand. There is a way and a means to be able to be made clean again. And so in modern times, I could, uh, could bring to light certain things to do such a thing, but I'm going to leave that up to people because not everyone is going to ever be able to uh, participate in this uh, ash pile washing ceremony. And the traditional way that that ceremony, they relied on the seasons. And so many times it was done in the springtime and the, on the Anglo calendar, it might be somewhere the latter part of March or the first part of April. And that was when that particular ceremony, it's one of the very first ceremonies done after the, uh, the winter season. And so it was a special occasion, a special time. And all of the family members that come is to help this individual to keep that particular ceremonial that was performed for that person sacred and so that they help that person as much as they possibly can in uh, keeping with what they had uh, experienced in the ash pile washing ceremony and those are the things that we are told <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay. <laughs>